Welcome to the Shabby and Man podcast. We are partners, parents, podcasters, broadcasters, and everything else in between. Namaskar. You know, I thought today we'll do a uplifting, upbeat uh, podcast. You know, normally it's very downbeat. No, but depressing. I, I've, I've actually thought about it this time. Mm. What makes you happy in life? We'll do like a happiness episode. You know, I'm saying this because I read somewhere recently that. different people have different things that give them joy some people for some people it's pets for some people it's meditation for some people it's exercise you know for some people it's being kind helping others social media social media gives you happiness no it doesn't give me happiness and then that's the end of the podcast then i, I thought you'd say something very cerebral no i was actually going to say that you will have to do most of the talking here because i am not a very happy I'm not a person with a very happy disposition by default. I gravitate to the melancholic side of life. I love sad songs, I love sad stories. I love I'm not a happily ever after. You you like the dukhi udas side of life? Uh yeah, I naturally gravitate to the dukhi udas side of life. That's not good. <laughs> so what do you mean that's not good? That's how people are. There is no you know, let's just first establish what happiness is it is I'm, a journey I'm, what i know what i it's not a destination is, I, that's too deep for me all i'm asking you is what gives you pleasure cup of tea what gives you joy what brings a spring in your step what makes you think ah aaj to jeene ki tamanna hai did you say what gives you pleasure this is still a family podcast right yeah that's why i said it because i know you so um yeah the, the, i mean i that's a that's a thought provoking question because i mean there's so many things that make you happy i think i can only speak for myself give me your list first actually since you're so keen to do the happiness uh, <laughs> special I, i'll tell you why this got triggered in my head because i read somewhere that you just need three things in life to be happy and i thought that's not really true twitter the, instagram facebook no for, maybe for you But for most Not people, for me. I'm speaking for you. No, for most people it's someone to love, something to do, and something to look forward to. That's what I read. Mm. I thought, "Huh?" Yeah, because you know you keep seeing these compilations every now and then in every book that you know mindfulness and and uh, it works for a lot of people. Yeah, it does. You know, living in the moment and 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 kind of living for others and, and let's I, face it everyone we know who's recently taken up yoga is so I and mean, we've got a lot of friends who've done it recently hmm. friends and family yeah, so it is a, and they're so happy it is a mind body soul connect right it can't be it, you can't just look after one aspect of your life and ignore um, the rest so you have to take care of your body you have to take care of your mental health and you have to have a spiritual side which kind of rises above the banal and uplifts you to a happy space i think you know what i really enjoy what it's um just sitting in a coffee shop kind of thing and watching the world pass by yes not i would a, i would agree with that not in a voyeuristic kind of way but yeah. you know i i just love watching people's in idiosyncrasies their foibles what they're up to and what does that makes you happy because I don't know it just makes me happy. Mm. Must be the uh, what, what is that posh word which I can never remember is a, what is that like endorphins some there's a, something that really comes out of your system. Is it serotonin? Me? Serotonin. Thank is that, you. Okay. It is serotonin. Mm. It's like the happy happy drug as mm. scientists say. Mm. And uh, my serotonin flows out when so I'm you in a are, shop. So you are um easy to please that means you just need to watch the world go by and you're happy I'm in very happy space. Yeah, I don't really need very many materialistic things. Oh, all right. And like you? No, that's that's completely wrong. I I don't need too many materialistic things either. I feel that the source of my happiness very much lies in making other people happy. Those around you, I think it's not a myth. It's absolutely true when they say that it is far more satisfying to give than to receive oh, you mean it's true then what i said before someone to love something to do and something to look forward to yeah you know you derive happiness from the happiness of those you love and on a so on one side you're very melancholic yes on the other side you're into seva 
other people's seva seva and not just seva in that sense but you know even if it is family and friends you know i'm always excited when i get the opportunity to do something which i know they'll like you know and it's on a, i mean if you break it down then either it is making a dish that you know they're fond of or buying them something that you know they've been looking forward to or um, you know taking them to a place which you know they will absolutely enjoy so i think the happiness you derive from making somebody else happy is far greater than the happiness you get from doing something for yourself you like feeding people also i do like feeding people as well there's another thing i like which is uh, i don't tell me sunsets But why do you say that because every time i see your instagram there seems to be a sunset uh, or trees yeah or well, flowers you know that's because uh, i have an aesthetic eye so it's something that pleases my uh, aesthetic side yes but um, i think happiness also for me personally is um, hovering believe it or not i derive a lot of calm from doing something where my mind can be happily and gainfully occupied elsewhere because when you're just hovering the house you know it's something you do on autopilot you're not really i'm not sure if that is something that gives people happiness hmm. or it's something where you need to see a specialist no it's not something you need to see a specialist for i know exactly what you mean uh, you should in fact be very thankful that you're married to someone who looks at uh, keeping the house tidy as part of her happiness uh, routine no, but it I'm, makes I'm married i'm married to someone who if i put something down yeah it's gone it's put in its place oh you mean it's it's cleared away yeah. how lucky are you it, Oh, nothing is ever people, out some, of place for some people what's lucky <laughs> yeah for other people is known as a nightmare oh well th- there you go well maybe the next one needs to be a nightmare special but um, yeah i it helps me more than happy actually i should say it helps me unwind it helps me relax and i also find that some of the most creative thoughts come to me when i'm either hovering or i'm doing something you know something about the house something extremely um basic banal banal and something yeah, that is yeah, part of my you, routine you remind me of uh, freddy mercury and queen and i want to break free oh my god who would again yeah, yeah of course i have but i think there is some truth in that as well yeah but as i grow older mm. i also enjoy the, the act of meeting up with old friends reminiscing about the past we talk about old days mm. i mean that phase of going out has kind of gone now i'm mm. much more you know I'm, i like it much better if we're all sitting around in someone's house and chit chatting mm. So it doesn't I, really happen that often. I think that has to do with age. I think you're right because I've found that one of the things that turning 40 does to you, let's face it, we are both on the other side of 40 now, some of us even on the other side of 50. But uh, one thing that turning 40 does to you is liberate you from the pressures of trying to comply with other people's Uh, opinions you and caring what anyone else thinks care, yeah you would really stop caring what somebody else says uh, and you know long time since i thought oh what will they think yeah and you start doing things for yourself which i think is the is step 1 which is something when you're young you're too eager to please you too keen to kind of get ahead and prove your worth and steal the limelight and you know really kind of uh, uh, what should i say what would it be i mean uh, I'm, i'm not even talking about being uh ambitious career wise but even as as people you know when you're young you feel that the world is your oyster and and and, and you have something you're to in prove. a rush to get somewhere to yeah you have something to prove and you're in a rush to get somewhere but i think as you grow older you realize that happiness can also be derived from very small things and actually getting off that treadmill getting off that you know i have to compete with the rest of the world and forever uh, trying to prove to somebody else that i'm as good or even better getting off that coming off that and living life at your own pace and proving doing things that please you more than anybody else that is the biggest lesson that age aging brings It's you it's strange you say that because um, this week i went to see the boomtown rats and mm. um, bob geldof and their biggest hit is yeah. called rat trap mm. which is about getting out of the rat trap mm, the rat race yeah and i think that that's that's what it is and 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 i'm in that phase of my life where at least professionally i feel that uh, you know i'm constantly the media is one of those environments where you really have to be on top of your game all the time it's 24/7 full on you never really switch on switch off and i feel that uh, people while people who are much younger than me or people who are 
maybe even the same age you know they get a lot of joy from doing breaking stories oh we got the exclusive interview we talked about this first we we got a retweet from so and so we got a this and that somehow that has never meant much to me and i know that while the one on one hand you can describe it as being not being ambitious enough on the other hand i feel that you know i've i've felt that the biggest blessing in my life is the ability to be able to negotiate my career on my terms i've somehow always been blessed with uh, people who i've worked with who've understood you know where i come from who understood what makes me happy and what makes me deliver my best and i say that about you as well you know as husband and wife you know um i think we are yin and yang and that is why we've been able to flourish as individuals and uh, get to a space where um we can have our you know different hobbies we can have our different tastes and, and yet we can argue we can yin, argue and who's yin and who's yang I'd yeah, like yeah we, that depends on you know when you ask me what time of day it is but you know what i'm trying to say that it's it you it, happiness takes on a whole new meaning um when if you, if you you've lived a few decades it's very hard to be content in life but it's a rare gift yeah because you're always thinking you know grass is always greener on the other side yeah and you're always thinking of moving on to the next rung but i think if you are again it's not something that um it, even if you are in a happy space as it were and even if you're doing all the things that you want to do and all the things which you think will make you happy it's not that you've achieved everything there is to achieve there will be days when you feel down and out there will be days where exactly as you're saying you will beat yourself up for not doing the things that you wish you had done so it is very much a work in progress and i think the the biggest lesson to take away from here is that one must seek happiness in the smaller moments you know it's not about आज तो यू नो नहीं ये मुझे मिल गया है खुशी हो रही है इससे लेकिन आई एम आफ्टर समथिंग एल्स विच इज बिगर ब्राइटर बेटर यू नो इफ इट्स अ कप ऑफ टी विद अ फ्रेंड इफ इट्स रीडिंग अ ग्रेट बुक इफ इट्स वॉचिंग अ वंडरफुल सनसेट इफ इट्स कैचिंग अप विद समन यू हैवन सीन फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम स्पेंडिंग टाइम विद योर ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स स्पेंडिंग टाइम विद योर चिल्ड्रेन any and everything duration doesn't matter who you're with doesn't matter but as long as it fills your heart with joy and as long as it brings a smile to your face i think recently hmm. you've also started appreciating me time yeah 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 time that you have alone but away, i away from the kids yeah definitely away from me no but i feel that you and i i feel that is one of our biggest strengths as a couple i feel that we have even when we were young you look at us 20 years ago 30 years ago we've uh, always please, been let me just tell this as i didn't know 30 years okay ago. 20 years ago 25, don't make me sound so old yes 20 uh, okay what we weren't mad i'm not saying we were married 30 years ago but what i'm saying is when you look back even when we were not the age we are now i feel that one of our biggest strengths as individuals is the fact that you and i both know how to keep ourselves occupied and entertained whether it is reading a book whether it's going for a walk whether it is watching something playing the guitar for you singing for me sometimes we, you know whatever it may be we have never been bored on our own whereas there are many couples who i've seen who like to do things together you know i'm not deriding them all i'm saying is that their vibe is completely different they feel incomplete without the other person or they feel that you know it, since becoming a couple they have to like the exact same things we have never had that and i think that's so important i feel that it's so important in a person's individual growth because if you're not Asli, happy individually you're not going to be happy as a person actually baat hai matlab we must have some common ground yeah hamare common ground is something hai. that you and me like together no of course we have but then we have just as many things that you like and i don't and the other way around as well so happiness how would you sum it up i'd say that the, the, it's the small moments of joy that crop up every day sometimes without warning it's not necessarily something you have planned and labored over or spent a lot of money on how come you haven't mentioned the retail therapy yeah retail therapy uh, i am i have a bit of a uh, problem there i feel <laughs> i don't feel happy until i bought something virtually every single day it doesn't have to be big i know but did you say a bit of a problem yeah a bit of a problem but i think then there again you know psychoanalysts and all will tell you that there's a direct correlation between people buying something and ba- feeling good yeah feeling well, good about it's a very temporary feel good very temporary because you know the moment you've bought it the moment it becomes yours 
almost the very next minute the charm goes right because it's already in your possession so it is about you know this is something like people of our parents generation say like mom and dad used to always say that because we were given gifts only on certain occasions we would look forward to the birthdays value, the value, value them much so much yeah. more now it's just a matter of you know every time we've ticked off something on our boys list 10 more things get added and it's not that they have to wait for christmas or their birthdays you know next thing you know everything's been ordered on amazon and it's arriving so there's the joy of valuing something that you've wanted for a long time is completely missing from their lives because they don't have to wait that long to get anything and uh, and i i think i've we are pretty old school there well you know i said this time i had actually done a bit of homework hmm. this it really triggered something in my head so i actually read up on what scientists say are the the things that make you happy hmm they say and the three main things they say is um, practice daily gratitude hmm. always be thankful which i think we always are yeah so one is practice daily gratitude hmm. one is surround yourself with positive people hmm. now i don't know how to do that which is not always possible how can you yeah which is not always possible you don't possible. make friends and think oh he, he she is very positive hmm. let me be their buddy it doesn't yeah. work like that it right? doesn't work i think that is slightly impractical but i think the the essence is that it's always good to be with someone who sees the brighter side and uh, the third one was that um, practice regular acts of kindness hmm. and spend more time hmm. with your family and friends yeah we we believe in that because regular hmm. acts of kindness is again whether you call it kindness or whether you call it uh, y- your attempt to put somebody else's needs before you and therefore trying to make them happy which you know will reflect well i i i read years and years ago i read it's always stayed with me that the more you give yeah the more you get back yeah so i i believe in that yeah and that that's what i was saying at the start that uh, you know the joy you get from making somebody else happy is far greater than you the, the joy you get by doing something just for yourself you know some people are givers some people are receivers yeah that that's not the only thing i read i also said that another way they mm. said to stay happy mm. suppose you you're happy but you're not happy 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 Hmm. That What is that sense? even supposed to mean? To, to be truly, truly happy. Well, if so you're happy 24/7, then definitely you need no, to be investigated. Tiny, tiny, tiny things you have to do, like exercise more. Hmm. This probably brings out those chemicals or something. Yeah. 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 Trash all your negative thoughts if you can. That's very hard to do. Yeah, it's know? easier said than done. Yeah. But and, yeah. And uh, practice mindfulness. No, I'm not quite sure what mindfulness means. No, I mindfulness it, is I read it everywhere. Yeah, mindfulness is living the moment. If you're having a meal, then don't at the same time watch TV, look at your phone, look at that. Enjoy every morsel. Think of what you're putting in your body, in your mouth. Think of you know dwell on the flavors. Think of how the dish might have come together. Live the moment. Whatever you're doing, be a little aware of why you're doing it what that is bringing to your life how it is enhancing your life why you like it why you dislike it i think that's all it means that be in the present or be present in the moment don't try and do two three things together at the same time again but easier you, said but, than done but, you should, you but if you train your yourself yeah if you train yourself to do it i think it comes to you that much more naturally you know so um Uh so just to recap what gives you pleasure? Uh the tiny things in life. The small things in life, doing things for others more than doing things for myself. Sometimes very routine things like hovering and washing up and doing the dishes or stacking the dishwasher. Um uh and uh, definitely sitting down and you know chatting with family, friends, your children. Things that you don't plan, you know? Conversations that happen with friends um where you don't have an agenda you're just discussing your life you're talking about what happened to you that day you're talking about something you want to watch something you read something that caught your attention you know, small things we don't have pets yeah but all my friends who have pets yeah. friends and family yeah. so many in our family well i grew up with a dog i had a dog uh, yeah. rocky for 16 years it, 17 it years it becomes a part of the it's a yeah. center of their life yeah. which i think gives them great happiness yeah and uh, you know i was thinking one day i should uh, or we should hmm. have a cat or a dog hmm. well, if you no, i'm not choose, a cat person at all oh, well you want some my question yeah cats are easier to handle i thought yeah they are but i'm not a cat person you have to be either a cat person or a dog person and but i think you know with pets what it is it is unconditional love because unlike your children it's a horrible thing to say you know children is unconditional love. no but you know children will Don't argue children will argue children will have a mind of their own children have to be the pets your 
you have you ever heard of anyone whose pet is annoyed with them pets are the only beautiful blessed creatures on this planet who will love you no matter what you know so that is what that's a very special kind of a bond and a love where no matter what you do your dogs and your cats and your pets will always come to you and love you you know and they'll not judge you so that's a very different kind of thing it was wrong to compare them with children but you know what i'm trying to say um so that's that yeah i mean um as long as we know that there's no secret pill that you can have to make yourself happy and that because you're very happy today it does not guarantee that tomorrow you will not be sad because it's something that you constantly need to work on if and I, it becomes a way of life uh, ronan keating yeah life is a roller coaster you got to ride it yep that's what it is is that the end of the podcast that or do is, you that is the end of the podcast do you want to say the uh, download us do this do that by the way whoever does that thank you so much yeah and i truly hope that you're happy Yes because uh, that is part of our uh, um uh, what did you talk say about gratitude uh, that every single day be uh, be grateful be grateful think of the things that you have that others may not and always always give thanks for those so when it comes to a podcast we are extremely grateful for all the people who listen to us and give us so much encouragement till next time bye bye